for the first time in a long time, I felt like there was hope that my life could be better. I'm Kathy McIntyre. I've been in Bloomington Normal for 30 plus years now. Uh, brought, brought here by State Farm to work in their IT department. Now very happily retired. My situation was more of a gradual. I feel like it was more of a gradual and I didn't realize that it was even a hearing problem until it really began affecting everyday operations. Watching television was just pointless. I had to have closed captioning on, or I was constantly turning to my husband and asking, what did they say? Going to the movies was even worse because in the movie theater, it's so loud. You know it's loud enough. And yet I couldn't figure out what people were actually saying. Like we, we would go out to dinner and it felt like I was being excluded from the conversation. In fact, it got to the point where it it was almost kind of borderline paranoia where I was feeling like people were whispering and intentionally excluding me. So many of these incidents were happening and it was so frustrating and um, it was impacting family life. And so I found this little test out on the internet. It was like, you might have a hearing problem if, and I answered like 10 questions and I answered yes to nine out of 10. And that was when I went, okay at least need to get it checked, get my hearing checked. Yeah. I, I'd had hearing tests at State Farm as a wellness thing, and they had never triggered me to, you know, said, hey, you've got a hearing problem, you should go check it out or anything. And so I think deep down there was a fear that it wasn't a hearing problem, that I was just stupid, that I just wasn't, ugh that I just wasn't catching things. And uh, in fact, I, I had that feeling when I went in for my first test with Natalie, was what if she doesn't find a hearing problem? Finally did work up the courage to go in and get an appointment. I actually went to my mother-in-law who, um, who had hearing aids and asked her where she went and she recommended Bloomington, Bloomington Normal Audiology. And I got an appointment and went in and even sitting in the room, it was uh, taking the test was stressful. And because I still had that fear of what are we going to really, I mean, this is now a definitive answer to my fears. Um, and I remember at some point during the testing, Natalie came into the booth and she, she asked me, think back to your childhood, think back to the first time you had any kind of symptoms. And for the first time, I thought, oh, yeah, you know, when I was in high school and I would take my glasses off because I was in food service and the dish machine would steam it up or whatever. And I would take my glasses off and somebody would call to me and I would say, just a minute, I hear better with my glasses on. And it was just a joke at the time. Everybody kind of made fun of me, but it was it was true. And then looking back, I realized I was doing a lot of my hearing with my eyes and just never realized it. So apparently I had a hearing problem very early on in my life, but it was, Natalie explained it to me that um, I wasn't, I was filling in gaps that I could contextualize and I could figure out what was being said based on context and on watching your face. I wasn't necessarily hearing all the sounds. I was watching facial indications of what was being said and didn't even know it. It was just internal. She, she came in and explained that my, the upper ranges were what I couldn't hear, that I could hear the lower ranges, and that's why I thought I could hear. But there, were certain, there was a lot that I was missing. And she explained all that. She explained that she could help me. That was the biggest part, was when she said that she could help me. I guess um, there was this huge sense of relief. Um, 
maybe I wasn't as dumb as I thought. <laughs> maybe I wasn't stupid after all. And, and that for the first time in a long time, I felt like there was hope that my life could be better. What was it like putting him in for the first time? Oh. <laughs> it was amazing. I, I, um, I remember she put him in and she was feeding like, like restaurant situations. And she, she could simulate, you know, all the noise around me and that she could block it out. And I, I just rem I remember the one time when she did that blocking of the restaurant noise and I could all of a sudden hear the main person speaking to me. I was like, oh. I, I just sat right up in my chair. I, I just, it was so exciting. And that was a deal breaker for me. That was a, a game changer. For, for going out to dinner and things like that was just immediately a difference in my life. I was amazed at how loud paper was. That was one of the biggest, you know, being at work all the time, people shuffling papers. I was like, ooh, really? Um, and, and, but I'd never heard it before. I, I never noticed it before. And I can't imagine how annoying I was because I didn't even know I was creating that kind of sound. Um, and then I played with them a little bit um, because I was amazed at what my brain apparently had done. I remember I went to our youngest daughter's um, high school madrigals uh, concert and was just amazed at the sound and the voices I'd never heard before. I was also amazed at the camera clicking that I didn't, I had never heard. Uh, so, and I, turned, I remember turning to my husband going, is it always like that? <laughs> and he didn't even know what, because in his selective hearing, he had tuned that kind of thing out. I had never heard it. But I found that like, I couldn't, without them, I couldn't hear songs. In fact, there was one song that, song that I thought was a foreign song. I assumed they were singing in French or something. And it turned out when I looked down and, and saw what the, what the name of the song was, that I could actually hear the, the words afterward. So my brain, that proved to me what Natalie had told me, that my brain had filled in gaps that I had no idea was even happening. I remember another incident where my daughter shared with me, we were out to eat and Wait staff had asked me a question and I immediately responded and she goes, oh, mom, I'm so glad to see the, what did she call it? That the mom pause is gone. Because she had always heard when she would call, she would say something to me and I would be on the phone with her, but I would, I would need processing time. I would hear what she said, but I'd have to process it, figure it all out and then respond. And I didn't even know I was doing that but she had gotten used to this long pause that I had every time I talked to her on the phone. One of the biggest differences for me, awakening for me afterward, was when I discovered that what I thought was a personality thing, what, that I was an introvert and quiet and didn't actively engage with people. After I got hearing aids and I, I got more confident with them that I could hear, I found myself one day in an elevator with somebody I didn't know, and I just struck up a conversation and started talking to them and had a wonderful little, you know, just a couple minute thing in an elevator. But when I got off, I, 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 I had startled myself because I didn't do that. That's not who I was. And I realized it was because of my hearing that I had never been that person. Uh, because I was always afraid if I engaged, whatever it was that they would say back, I wouldn't know what it was and I couldn't respond intelligently. So I just never did. And in fact, it wasn't who I was. It was just my fear keeping me from being able to engage with people. One of the main reasons I wanted to do this so much was if I can help somebody, if, if somebody can see this and think, ooh, well, I do have trouble at dinner and just go check it out, maybe it could make a difference in their life, like mine. 
has been changed. I, I don't, I, that's what I wanted to do. I would love to be able to help somebody else find the answer sooner than I did.